but I, I am determined not to go back to the life of, of alcohol, which almost destroyed me. I went on this bench for at least a couple of years and I, I thought I was missing out on something. But I wasn't enjoying my life. I, I was slowly destroying my life. My, my good reputation was, I was losing that. Stayigute, welcome my friends to The Storyteller, where you'll find First Nations people from across Native North America who are following Jesus Christ without reservation. Today we'll hear from Vincent Larry of the Mi'kmaq Nation in Eel Ground, New Brunswick. Vincent was convinced that if he tried to live the best he could, God would decide where he would go. But then he met some people who told him something different. My name is Vincent Larry. I'm from the community of Ilgram, and I'm from the, uh, the Mi'kmaq tribe. Eel Ground is a small community located on the banks of the uh, famous Miramichi River in New Brunswick, uh, Canada. Uh, we have a population here of approximately uh, seven, eight hundred now. It's not a big community. Uh, everybody pretty well knows everybody in this community, which is a similar story, I think, with most of our Aboriginal communities across Canada and the United States. I'm not a full breed Indian, I'm a, I'm a half breed. I'm half Irish and half Mi'kmaq. I was born in this area. Mother gave birth to me at the hospital in Chatham, which is located about 10 minutes from here. I've always lived here mostly in Ilgron. I fondly remember the, uh, my youth, like where everybody seemed to be equal, everybody shared. Nobody was really rich except maybe for a few families that, that worked in the big mill. But uh, mostly, we were all just uh, poor people, really. We, uh, you know, lived in the same old houses, the uh, dirt roads on a reserve. In the fall time, you went, you went deer hunting and moose hunting and, and all the other stuff, trapping small game, and we ate okay. It was mostly good. There was a lot of alcoholism on a reserve, but you know, we just, as children, we just try to stay away from it. We, we never spent much, much time at home because uh, usually the growing ups would be drinking. I remember I, I would just get up early in the morning and, and uh, make my way, way around the reserve. And if it was summertime, I went through the blueberry patches and uh, ate blueberries and such for breakfast and and went to the Kubo, Kubo, which is a spring, you know, got some water to drink and, and went swimming and uh, lunchtime be similar. And uh, I just uh, almost fend off the land, really. And in supper time, you know, most of the time, my mother would have something for us to eat supper time. And so my childhood was, you know, like, like mostly the same as any other child, I guess, growing up on Indian Reserve, from what I've heard at least. Later on, I, uh, as a young man, I went to the States, works in the States uh, for, uh, for a little while, about three, four years or so. Worked in renovating houses, learned about, you know, electrical stuff and everything else. And when I was about 19 or 20, I came back to the community, to the res, and uh, there were uh, jobs opening up. And uh, one of the jobs opening up was for a uh, native constable, so I applied. I, I didn't really think I'd get it or anything. I just, just applied for it, and lo and behold, I, I got that job. And I, I served as a uh, policeman on the reserve for about 21 years. Seeing a lot of pain. A lot of poverty, and uh, mostly from the result of, you know, people drinking and taking drugs, and and uh, I I tell that to people today, like you know, like look at yourselves, like you know, all that you're into today, like you know, like you know, drinking and you know, getting into drugs and then such, and, and that's what's getting everybody in trouble in our 
in our community. And uh, you need to change your lives. But that is easier said than done. I have discovered over the years that my words have no power at all. And I've discovered that by using God's word, and I believe the Bible is God's word, that there is power in that. That if, if you give them a scriptural quote when they're ready, such as for God so loved the world, that he gave us his only begotten son, Jesus, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm always surprised to discover that a lot of people have never never heard this uh, short, simple verse. I, I don't want to belittle it or anything. It's a very powerful verse. It's what led, led me to God years ago. And uh, that's through the uh, ministry of uh, Carl and Kathy Hill. And uh, I remember that time I was a policeman and, and uh, living my life, you know, like, you know, on my days off, I, I drank. You know, and uh, just barely did my work, really. And uh, it was Carl and Cassie that made me see that the way I was living was wrong. I was always convinced through tradition that if I tried to live the best I could, that God will decide when I kneel before him whether or not I will pass through the gates of glory, if you will, if I will go to heaven or not. But it was Carl and Kathy that explained to me that through Ephesians 2, 8, 9, that, that it is by grace that we are saved through faith in Jesus, and that not of ourselves, but it is a gift of God, not of works, least anyone should boast. Those words really hit me hard. I, I didn't never really realized that before, that we are saved by grace, and that we are saved through and by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So when I discovered the meaning of that, that was a wonderful day for me. Has uh, living a Christian life been easy? Oh no, you know, it has its struggles. You know, and uh, it is uh, a daily life of discipline. But I, I am determined not to go back to the life of, of alcohol, which almost destroyed me. I went on this bench for at least a couple of years, and I, I thought I was missing out on something. But I wasn't enjoying my life. I, I was slowly destroying my life. My, my good reputation was, I was losing that. And so, discovering Jesus, having a personal relationship with God, which I never knew about before, that is what, what helped me. And like I say, it hasn't been easy. Life is a struggle. And I've slipped, certainly I've slipped, and I think most of us have. And even, you know, one of the verses that won me over, that, that Carl and, and uh, Kathy taught me was, uh, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And nobody, nobody can work their way to heaven. And, and that was another revelation for me too. Today, I just, I do the best I can. I never leave, leave my house without getting on my knees and asking God to give me strength for the day. And I never go to bed at night without getting on my knees once again and asking for protection from God, and protection from my family, my community, that God would bless us, that God would open the eyes and open the ears of the lost so they could see the truth of the word and that they may realize that that there is only one way of salvation. And as scripture says, that there is only one name given under heaven by God, and that is the name of Jesus by which we must be saved. The word of God says uh, in Acts 1 8, uh, and he gave this commandment to the uh, apostles and disciples. 
And he told him that you shall go into all the world and preach the gospel. And he said to the Jews first, to the Sumerians, and to all the other races of, of the earth. You know, of course, you know, the, the apostles and disciples, they never knew anything about the different nations that exist in, in this world. Huh? But, you know, I, I like going to Psalms 97. It says, The Lord reigns. Let all the peoples of the earth rejoice. I believe it goes that way. All true scripture, it indicates that the gospel is going to go all around the world. And you know, like a lot of us, we, we were instituted into different types of religions. And uh, I was, myself, I was raised as a, you know, Roman Catholic. Yeah? And uh, now that I know better, yeah, I don't really agree with everything that, you know, my religion taught me. But I know this much that they are sincere. And uh, I believe that, you know, like, as sincere as they are, like they are wrong in certain things. But it's not just them. You know, I've been a Christian now since 1981. And, I, and I've discovered that sometimes we can go off on a tangent, if you will, like certain, certain scripture, and embrace it and, and say to ourselves, this is the absolute truth and I, I don't really care what all the other scripture says. But it's important for us as Christians to look at all of God's word and to accept all of it. And this is fate, really. Fate comes by hearing the word of God, by accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior of our lives. But faith also is believing in all of God's word, and not just in certain portions of it. And it's important for us as Christians, especially if we've been indoctrinated in certain religions like I was, but, you know, i got to work as hard as I can. And if I work really hard and try to be as best and as good as I can, then maybe, maybe I'll make it to heaven. But God's Word says that, that we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus, and that not of ourselves. Many people believe that if their good works outweigh their bad, God will accept them. This is not true. In fact, no amount of good can undo the wrong we've done or make us acceptable in His sight. God had to make a way. He sent us a gift that we must accept by faith. That gift is His Son, Jesus Christ, who came to pay the penalty for our sins. His death satisfied God's justice. His resurrection proved it. Those who receive Jesus as their Savior are no longer condemned. It's true. God tells us in His Word, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. What are you trusting in? What you can do or what God has already done? My friend, put your trust in Jesus. Want to know more? Write to us at The Storyteller, P.O. Box 1001, Bemidji, Minnesota, 56619. That's P.O. Box 1001, Bemidji, Minnesota, 56619. Our phone number is 877-766-4648. Our web address is withoutreservation.com. And you can also find us on Facebook at Without Reservation. Thanks for listening. And remember, the greatest story took place at the cross. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. My friends, there's more to Vincent's story, so be sure to join us again next time as we listen to The Storyteller.